Question 1. John wants five employees to be able to access a new database server so they create new tables and schemas for the database for a new application. Which of the following should he perform to give them access? A. Create a username and password for each of the users individually to be able to make the changes they need. B. Set a complex password for the service account that the database runs under and give that password to the employees who need to access the server. C. Create a single username and password and give the information to each of the employees and ask that they not share the information with anyone else. D. Use a guest account for the employees to be able to access in order to limit what they are able to do. A. Correct answer. Create a username and password for each of the users individually to be able to make the changes they need. Explanation. John should create a username and password for each of the users individually. Service accounts should never have a password that would allow users to log in as the service account. Shared accounts should also be avoided whenever possible as well as guest accounts. Question 2. Fictional Corp. wants to install a physical security device that will require an employee to use the something you have authentication factor. Which of the following might they choose to implement? Choose 2. A. A. Handprint geometry scanner. B. Key fobs. C. Locks. D. Retinal scanner. B. Correct answer. And C. Correct answer. Explanation. A lock on the door would require someone to have a key. While key fobs would be used with a proximity reader to determine which employee is attempting to gain access. Both the handprint geometry scanner and retinal scanner are considered part of the something you are authentication factor. Question 3. Jacob is traveling for work at the moment. After checking into his hotel, he attempts to join the wireless network and is prompted to enter his last name and room number. Which of the following has the hotel implemented? A. A radius. B. SSO. C. LDAP. D. Captive portal. D. Correct answer. Captive portal. Explanation A captive portal is a web page that typically pops up when joining certain public wireless networks. They may ask users to simply agree to a set of terms and conditions, verify who the user is, such as being a valid hotel guest. Question 4. Amir has just received a call that the network has ground to a halt at the headquarters building. He eventually found that in one of the conference rooms someone had connected two ends of the same cable into two separate jacks in the conference room leading to the same switch. Which of the following will prevent a loop from occurring and causing traffic to come to a crawl or a halt? A. A. TTL. B. RIP. C. OSPF. D. STP. D. Correct answer. STP. Correct. Explanation. The spanning tree protocol is used in layer 2 switching to prevent switching loops. Switches do not use the TTL time to levy, field of packets to prevent an infinite loop. They also do not make use of the RIP or OSPF routing protocols. Question 5. Which of the following might be a reason for which we would enable port mirroring on a network switch? A.802.1x point point compatibility. B. Because the switch cannot read TTL of the packets. C.to prevent switching loops. D. Packet capture. D. Correct answer. Packet capture. Correct. Explanation. The spanning tree protocol is used in layer 2 switching to prevent switching loops. Switches do not use the TTL, time to levy, field of packets to prevent an infinite loop. They also do not make use of the RIP or OSPF routing protocols. Question 6. Sheila has configured one of the wireless networks with her office to not broadcast the name of the network. Which means that it must be manually typed into any devices in order for them to join that network. 
Which of the following fields does she need to configure on those devices? A. TKIP. B. VLANID. C. SSID. D. CCMP. C. SSID. Correct answer. Explanation. The service set identifier, or SSID, is the name of a network and can be set to broadcast so that clients can easily find it or not broadcast so that clients have to manually type it into their devices. Question 7. Paris needs to securely log into one of the Linux machines that is running as a virtual machine on the cloud provider that her company uses. Which of the following might she use to do this? A. SSH. B. TFTP. C. RDP. D. Telnet. A. SSH. Correct answer. Explanation. SSH is the only option that provides encryption and is used with the Linux operating system. RDP includes encryption as well but is a Microsoft protocol used with the Windows operating system. Question 8. Which of the following common authentication protocols may be used as part of 802.1x in a WPA2 enterprise configuration? A. SSO. B. TLS. C. Radius. D. TACAX Plus. C. Radius, correct answer. Explanation. Radius is commonly used in wireless networks as part of an 802.1x configuration to authenticate users against a centralized authentication system or user directory. Question 9. Which of the following would be considered multi-factor authentication? A. Key fob and smart card. B. RFID badge and PIN. C. PIN and password. D. Facial recognition and fingerprint reader. B. RFID badge and PIN. Correct answer. Explanation. Multi-factor authentication is when you are using at least one form of two or more different factors of authentication. In this case. An RFID badge is something you have and a PIN is something you know. Question 10. Gary is trying to access a system that requires him to enter his password to gain access. Which of the following is this considered? A. Something you are. B. Something you know. C. Something you do. D. Something you have. B. Something you know, correct answer. Explanation. A password is a form of an authentication factor known as something you know.